we are going, uh, me together with uh, two PhD students, Giovanni Gaggero and Alessandro Fausto, uh, who will help me guiding you through this uh, uh, method we are proposing within uh, this project, uh, whose title is Wireless Interface uh, Network Security Assessment. Okay. So first of all, in order to put the our proposed method uh, uh, in the scope of the Value3S project, uh, I just mentioned uh, this uh, sentence from the proposal of Value3S in this slide, which is the focus of Value3S is on verification and validation of cyber physical automated systems. So this is uh, the overall uh, uh, field where uh, our proposed method is going to, to, to tackle, uh, and in particular, uh, so related both to cyber and physical security. Uh, in uh, in uh, more detail, as you can imagine, uh, automated system, uh, currently developed automated system, can be equipped with uh, wireless interfaces, could be Wi-Fi interfaces, uh, radio link, uh, Bluetooth interfaces, uh, uh, different kind of technology, wireless technologies. And uh, behind uh, these interfaces could also be uh, different systems, uh, some of them also vital system. Uh, for example, if you think about the autonomous uh, driving cars, uh, behind this wireless interface could be also the, the CAN bus systems, which is uh, uh, directly linked and to, to, to vital <laughs> systems. And if malicious user can get access to these systems, uh, which uh, per se are not so uh, protected uh, from the cybersecurity point of view, as we will see in the next slides, uh, the damage could also be significant. So uh, what we propose, which is the scope of our method, is just to try to improve uh, something which, found, which we found in the literature about the exploitation of the vulnerability and the threats that can be, I mean, uh, taken uh, in, in place uh, through wireless interfaces uh, in order to, on one hand, uh, assess uh, the security of this wireless interface in, uh, in the use case uh, we, we are going to consider, but also in general, uh, try to improve the uh, testing uh, methods and uh, also the security of, uh, of these uh, wireless interfaces. And in particular, within uh, the, this project, we will uh, um, consider the radio link and the Wi-Fi interfaces. So both from the uh, attack injection point of view, and in some way, we will also try to think about if some procedure related to the security assessment could be improvement uh, uh, thanks to, to the output of our uh, investigation and test. Uh, Okay, so I think that now I'm going to leave the floor to Giovanni Gaggero to this uh, technical part and then uh, Alessandro Fausto so they can enter in uh, more detail about this method. Thank you, Fabio. So good morning, everyone. Um, this type of automated system are usually based on Canvas protocol. Canvas is a, a protocol designed for automotive application in the 90s by the Bosch company, and now it's a ISO standard, standard that defines the data link and the physical layer of the protocol. Uh, that was designed to operate um, in an environment with high electromagnetic nodes, so the, the main purpose, the main aim to, to the protocol was that, uh, to be able to operate in particular environments. Next. Um, this is the, the frame of the protocol that um, based the access of, 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 uh, to the media on current sense multiple access uh, strategy. So, uh, for example, if two nodes um, uh, start transmitting simultaneously, the, the access is managed uh, through the arbitration field. So, for example, one node starts transmitting at, and has uh, a priority level four, the other has, um, has priority level five, the, the first node starts transmitting one, 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 zero. So uh, it's transmitting a zero and see on the channel a one and stop the, its own transmission. Um, and, and also we can see from the frame that uh, as a huge uh, CRC field, so uh, the protocol implement a strong error checking method. Next. Um, 
we can also notice that the protocol doesn't implement any particular security mechanisms. So um, uh, it's uh, there's no cryptography, there's no authentication, and it's also quite easy to implement a denial of service. For example, uh, a free attack can be just to inject packet with uh, the highest uh, um, priority level, and so the channel is unavailable. For some reason, it's quite difficult to implement any other uh, mechanisms like uh, intrusion detection system or something like this on the canvas. So we can see that uh, the protocol basically implements no security mechanism. Next. For the reason, we, we have to ensure that the main control network is protected from, um, uh, from, the, from, the, um, from malicious attack. So making a, a sort of parallel between uh, uh, IEC Nord that is uh, 62443 for uh, um, the protection on industrial control system, Nord that cannot be uh, directly applicable to this type of system, but nevertheless, uh, the norm introduces uh, introduces uh, two concepts that are the zone and the conduit. So a zone is a, a particular portion of the network that must ensure a, a security level and the a conduit is a channel that makes two zones communicate and must ensure the same uh, level of security of the two zone. Um, trying to, as I said, making a parallel to to a control network based on canvas, we have to ensure that all the interfaces that uh, that allows to uh, access to the main control network, for example, the, all the wireless interface must ensure a uh, um, an high uh, security level. Next. And how we can uh, access to, uh, next slide, uh, how we can access to the Canvas network. For example, in the liquid system, it's, uh, it's quite easy. One of the main methods is accessing the OBD port that is usually located under the steering and is usually used for, uh, for maintenance or, or something like this. But uh, also infotainment systems are, are often connected to the canvas because, for example, if I want to um, share on the screen some information about uh, the, the functioning of the vehicle, for example, velocity, uh, the level of the fuel and so on, the most simple way is to directly connect the infotainment system to the canvas network. But infotainment are also connected to other devices, for example, as uh, Bluetooth gateway, Wi-Fi gateway, and uh, many other interfaces, but in this way, we are creating a direct channel between external devices that can be a PC, a, a smartphone, or, or something like this, to the Canvas network. So we are uh, usually enlarging the surface of attack. Next. While, for example, in the, um, the use case that we are considering, that is uh, the agri-robot use case, so uh, autonomous vehicle for agriculture um, application, also in this case, we can see that there are many uh, interfaces that uh, could allow to, to access the Canvas network. One of them is the radialing that is uh, used in this type of application for uh, teleoperation. And um, often the system has all, uh, also um, can Wi-Fi gateway that in this case could um, allow to inject directly paper in the main Canvas network, so directly sending commands to the TCU and all the, the apparatus that control the, the movement of the vehicle. Uh, and we can also notice that um, uh, another vulnerability we could be represented to the GPS because GPS is vulnerable. Uh, this proof can be uh, vulnerable, vulnerable to uh, many type of attacks. And in this case, uh, depending on the, the strategy that the vehicle used to estimate its own position, um, this is a, a, a huge vulnerability. For example, if the vehicle estimates its own position only with the GPS, it's quite easy to uh, to to compromise the functionality of the vehicle. Um, so at the moment, uh, I leave the floor to my colleague. We, who will uh, further explain 
uh, detail of uh, the verification for uh, wireless interfaces. Hello. <clears throat> We have considered two attack surfaces identified in the Agribot schema by the colored areas. The first attack surface is the radio link for teleoperation and is colored in red on the schema. As you can see, an attacker can try to compromise this radio link or device in order to take control of the agribot or inject packet on the CAN1 bus. The second attack surface is the CAN Wi-Fi and is colored in yellow on the schema. This gateway can be attacked by malicious user uh, in trying to broke or bypass the HTTP interface of the, of the gateway and gain control of the CAN bus number two. Um, if the attacker successfully compromised the security of the radio link can act in place of the original teleoperator taking the control of the agribot or can one bus. He can send command to the agribot uh, control unit but cannot directly reach other can device because they are connected to other can buses uh, using software defined radius tools an attacker can listen on frequency on radio frequency and send radio signals these tools are available both for Linux or Windows. One of the most known is uh, the, the tool uh, GNU Radio. The SDR card can work in various frequencies range. By example, the, H, uh, the ECRF SDR work in the range uh, from few megahertz to six gigahertz. The radio frequency used by the teleoperator link stay inside this range. So, um, the radio link protocol is uh, proprietary, but some information can be found searching on the FCC ID database. Uh, sometime we can we can uh, find radio frequency, and sometime also information about the modulation used. Uh, and the chip and also the microchip installed inside the device. Uh, the SDR device can be used in different malicious way. As first attempt, an attacker can monitor the frequency used by the radio link to detect the presence of a teleoperator in the file. Then they can capture and reply all radio link commands. These can be successful only if the device cannot take countermeasure against a reply attack. Uh, can be announced is a, um, a random number. Finally, the attacker is able, if is able to, uh, to do a reverse engineering of the protocol, it can also build a fake controller. Uh, to evaluate the security of the teleoperator radio link and device, we test different attack on the radio communication channel, starting from a simple jamming to more sophisticated attacks. We plan to evaluate intrusion detection technique based on a statistical approach. Uh, by example, uh, we can use radio channel occupancy or radio packet around trip time. Uh, the second attack surface taken in account is the CAN Wi-Fi gateway. A malicious user can try to compromise the gateway in order to gain access to the CAN bus 2. If this happens, he can send command to more vital device by example, the human machine interface or the radio track uh, or the um, agribot uh, track control unit. 
but it cannot interact with the device connected on CAN1 or CAN3 bus. To evaluate the security of this gateway, we use OWASP Web Security Testing Guide. This guide provides a lot of different tests to verify a web service use uh, and um, if a web service use all possible defense against uh, most common cyber attack technique. As an example, can be a, a SQL injection attack on user login form. A malicious and unauthenticated uh, user can exploit a flow in the user authentication to gain access to protected web page without having the required rights and can send packet to the canvas to and reach uh, vital device. Okay, perfect. So that's it for our side. Uh, maybe we we just be a little uh, short, but anyway, uh, we are here for the the question and answer. So I guess we have uh, ten minutes for this. So if there are uh, some questions, uh, we we are here.